Thank you. Welcome. So is the volume OK? Am I shouting too much? Nice, perfect. So coming on the stage, I was really stressed. I'm used to talking in front of crowds, but this is a completely different set of target audience for me. I'm usually uh, presenting shows for jugglers, and they're usually very drunk. So whatever you say, it's very OK, all right? So I have a tactic for you. You know, like the recommendation, they tell you if you're going to talk in front of a crowd and you're like stressed, you have to imagine the audience being naked. But for the Blender community, we can maybe fix it like this. Imagine the audience using Maya, OK? <laughs> then you will be OK. You will have no stress. So but ah. why are we here? We are here for this thing, which I changed the name of in the last minute. Don't do it, please. Like, if you're here the, uh, for the automation and AR and geometry nodes, this is the right place. Welcome again. Uh, we will be talking about this, but uh, specifically in my company, we use Blender in our pipeline at every point, like here, 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 here. But especially, I will focus on this part, which I beautifully like, uh, depicted on here. Uh, but the product is basically we take photos and design files of footwear models and turn them into immersive AR experiences to increase conversion rates, blah, 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 make money, be happy. Uh, but before diving into this thing, uh, which is kind of technical and geometry nodes, you know, procedural things, I would like to tell you a bit about myself. Uh, my name is Cem, which in Turkish actually means group of people coming together. So I'm in the right place. Like the Blender, co I was born to be a member of the Blender community. I know this. Uh, my educational background goes like uh, I was a mechanical engineer for two years. Then I say, no way. And I step into industrial design. Uh, and my professional background is like gaming industry for two years, then some product management in the same company because I was harassing the developers too much. So the bosses said, okay, okay if you're going to like keep harassing the developers, at least lead the games. You know, I was a product manager. Oh. And then now I'm the creative director uh, in this tech startup, which will come up. Are you hearing the same thing? Okay, somebody's trying to... Wow, I turned it. I think this is also OK. But can I ask for some technical help? Like this? Yeah. Uh, is it on? Really? Wow. So, uh, it, OK. When something can go wrong, it will go wrong. You can trust this. Is the microphone on, really? Wow. OK, I go back. I don't know why it, like, OK, thank you. This was the presentation. <laughs> we can all go back home. <laughs> so where was I? Yeah, I'm blah, blah, blah. I'm Jem, blah, blah, blah. Before I go into the talk, um, this is crazy. Ah, uh, yeah, my Blender history will come up. Like I've been working with Blender for three years now, and it's been a blast. And I hope you're enjoying the conference so far because I met some crazy people with crazy ideas. Uh, it's going great for me. So some really quick Turkish culture lessons for you. We have the saying called the monkey's appetite in Turkish, which is used for people who are indecisive uh, in their enthusiasm, pleasure, decision, often quickly changing. Like, Either you or someone you know fits this profile. Like a kid, they go around and play with everything they can. I mean, I'm sure you had the same experience when you first started Blender. Like, you open it up, you do some tutorials, then you so see something interesting. You go into sculpting, you try geometry nodes now, or you can be like a 2D guy, like the dedus. Uh, but in Turkey, this is seen as a bad thing. Like. Having a monkey's appetite is bad because Turkish people and the Turkish culture doesn't like change too much. So I was always criticized for having this. So the story goes like this. Uh, this is me. Uh, thanks to my sister for the drawings, by the way. Uh, I've been like a rock climber for like years. Then I still have a workshop in my house doing woodworking projects, metalworking. I am a circus monkey also. I, you might have seen me juggling somewhere around. 
and uh, I did a lot of things. And the story usually goes like this. And I'm the monkey, yeah, all the time. Uh, next one. So usually I'm minding my own business, maybe like uh, trying to hone my skills uh, in a specific field. And then I feel this uh, creeping feeling like something is approaching me from the back. And I get stressed. It's coming. And I will give a little Suzanne 3D print as a gift if someone can guess the next slide coming up. What do you think is creeping up behind me? Not Blender. Think of the monkey's appetite and the new things. Nobody, nobody was, uh, no. It's a new hobby. <laughs> every, every time, I almost swore, oh, okay. And uh, now it's some quick self, uh, shameless self-promotion time. I checked the time, oh, we're good. Quick, shameless self-promotion time. You might be asking like, why this guy has been telling us his life story, like there is not enough TED Talks already on the internet. Well, first I had to fill 20 minutes of a talk, which I definitely didn't leave for the last minute, okay? <laughs> I'm a very organized person. And secondly, all of these things that I do with my life, like climbing, music, every little playful thing I find and play with, they actually help me become who I am. This is the TED Talk part. Uh, and they really uh, add to my being and using Blender and how I use Blender, why I use Blender, why I am on the stage here today talking to you, which is a pleasure. Uh, so let me take you through my journey with Blender really quick, and then we will dive into the Geometry Node project for the nerds. I'm also a nerd. So I've, I started with modeling, uh, like many of you probably. I did not do the donut tutorial yet, which is kind of surprising. I will do it one day, I like promise, Andrew, sorry. And then uh, in the gaming industry, I had to go through a lot of like animation things. And I said, why not play, damn it, okay. I, I like learned my first FK, IK things with the, uh, for Unity and stuff like that and some shader work I used to like experiment on Blender's shader structure and import them, uh, like transpose them in Unity's shader graph, stuff like that. So this is to prove a point, like I have no idea what I'm doing, but I love doing it. And somehow, luckily, I landed a job uh, as an animator in this uh, title, which is on Steam, you can play it. It's like a crazy game. Where do I point? Ah. Like you're a dragon and Nazis invade your cave, so you go out to kill them. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, I had a crazy professor who got bored during COVID and made this by himself, and I just helped him with the animations. Uh, but all of the animations were made in Blender. Uh, I learned a lot of nice uh, tools to like work procedurally and uh, like uh, use animation layers, IKs, like noise modifiers and stuff like that, which is really fun. And lately, I have been, wait, I have to drink some water. Nice, it's so nice here, like, intermission break. Yeah. This is the important part. And lately, I've been, like, uh, fiddling with geometry nodes. Uh, this was my first geometry nodes project, like, somebody's gonna ever need a cactus generator, but I will be rich if one day we wake up and every cactus 3D model is disappeared from the internet, and I will sell my generator and I will be rich. And this one was a surprise. Like last month, I was in a juggling festival that we organized in Turkey. You are all welcome. I think the communities should meet. Uh, there was one guy uh, doing like a commercial uh, for like a t-shirt brand which I shouldn't say the name, yeah, definitely. Uh, but he was using some other software, not Blender. And in the middle of the festival, I was like curious to see uh, how long would it take to try to do a similar scene with Blender. And this whole thing, which was like the same duration of the guy, maybe took around like two to three hours from like uh, start to finish with the render and everything. This is Evie, by the way. Okay, now that you know me a little better, I can maybe, uh, now we can move on <laughs> with the main subject of the talk. So, Art Labs is the company I'm the creative director, creative director of. 
Uh, we build a lot of AR experiences for e-commerce. We call it AR commerce. But we will specifically uh, be talking about our product, Virtual Tryon. Uh, you, yeah, I will wait if you want to take pictures because there are some business people and my business people would have wanted me to wait. <laughs> so yeah, uh, the, the product Virtual Tryon is basically the thing you see here. And we had like 2 million users in the last quarter. So business is good and uh, AR commerce is being adopted really fast. So Virtual Tryon is basically like taking a 2D image in real time, it runs on a 3.js uh, environment. It's web-based, and we put like place uh, footwear models uh, on the 2D image so that I don't know Vans or Nike or they can sell more shoes to us. Conversion rates are important, but there is always a but in technology, right? The challenge is, like, if you directly put a shoe like that. Wow. Okay. If you directly put a shoe uh, onto a 2D image, it looks like this, which is not uh, believable. It's not realistic. So somehow you have to mask the render out each frame. And we have something called an occluder for this. So what is this occluder? Like, it's like um, uh, they're basically socks. Okay, We need to put a sock in each 3D uh, shoe model so we can use this as a shader mask in the 3JS structure. So. This is the beautiful occluder. The, it consists of two parts. There is the shoe top occluder and the heel occluder. The details are not important. Uh, and, uh, but the important part is the shoe top and the heel occluder work together to mask out the render in a way that uh, it renders more realistically. And we deal with uh, hundreds of shoes in a week because like when we make a deal with some retailer, uh, they send all of the shoe models at once, and we have to like finish this occluder project and the whole thing, whole pipeline. You know, like uh, you need to work really hard and manually doing this, making the occluder before geometry knows, as you can imagine, was a pain in the butt. Maybe you can uh, guess the next slide coming up. New hobby. Not new hobby. Like try to guess. <laughs> Try to guess like a small Turkish startup with a task like this, 250 shoes in a week. What do they do? Come on. Yeah. If we keep really quiet, we can hear our AI lead engineers crying while they're sculpting the sphere neatly into place so it fits the shoe perfectly. Of course, this is a joke, like uh, not the crying part. They, we were using our AI engineers, like the brain team of the company, for this task, and it took them around like 10 to 15 minutes because uh, they wanted it to be perfect. And I know manual workflow, uh, manual workflows, right? So, I kind of uh, I was newly hired creative director in the company, and they expect me to do like uh, social media content, some videos, animations, showcasing the technology, but nothing like geometry nodes and stuff like that. So I convinced the team to let's like give it a try with geometry nodes. Maybe we can automate the process, blah, blah, blah. They say yes. And I jump into the project with the monkey's appetite. If you remember, like I was like, yeah, I need to play with this. Why not risk it all? Risk your career with like a, yeah. But I jumped into it and then I started to get stressed because I had no idea where to start with geometry nodes. I made a cactus generator up until this point, remember? And it's not even textured. <laughs> so remember the monkey's appetite. I'm completely lost with the project. I know some of the nodes and what they do, but I'm nowhere near the technical expertise needed for a project like this. So remember the monkey's appetite? All those like 5 a.m. YouTube sessions watching manufacturing videos actually paid off. Because I was this guy, like during my university years, I was spending my nights until the morning watching videos like this, which seemed like a loss of time at that moment. But what do you know? Like you can actually recreate this blow molding technique with the Raycast node. And I love the Raycast node. If the developer who made it possible is here, I love you too. And the monkey is also in love with this node. So let's dive right into the technical stuff. I won't show a lot of node structures and stuff, but if you're interested in the technical 
challenges, you can find me later and we can nerd it out together. So uh, we need to first um, define the opening of the shoe so it's procedural and it works with every kind of shoe, right? Because we get boots, we get high heels, everything. A lot of different shoes exist, people. So you get the bounding box and like uh, draw a line on the top surface with some dot product calculation. You separate the top surface and make a line that goes right through the middle. And then with another raycast operation, you just array some rays uh, and then calculate where might be like a, such a big uh, change in the mathematical length difference. Uh, okay. They're called derivatives, guys. Okay, the first and the second derivatives give us like the two red lines, which uh, precisely enough like ap approximate the opening of the shoe. Then the rest of it is like a child's play. Uh, so these are the two points where we think the opening of the shoe might live in. Then we will use these two points as our starting point for the, okay, I will have to come here because I forgot to add one slide but there is a laser. So we use these two points and place a cylinder going from the middle point of the two points and the hit position of the index of the ray uh, that we calculated from. We, we place a cylinder and with another raycast operation, using the surface normals of the cylinder, you just blow into the cylinder really fast and it stops where it hits, kind of. Like uh, you carry the vertices to their hit, uh, relative hit positions, and voila, like you have the blow molding inside Blender, which works perfectly for every shoe. This is a lie, by the way, uh, but because this is still work in progress. Like I started uh, preparing the presentation. The occluder now looks completely different. It's much better, covers uh, a much more variety of shoe models, like different category of shoes. This is just another useless GIF. Uh, yeah, and the shoot-up occluder is like uh, even easier after that. You just get the two points and uh, extrude some lines, lines into planes, planes into boxes, and a beautiful subdivision modifier in uh, the subdivision node, in the geometry nodes, makes it like uh, not very hard corners, so the mask is smoother. And voila, we have the occluder fully automated. And we have the whole thing scripted with Python, so right now, like we are, we are in the middle of a new deal for like 300 shoes. The guys are probably working still <laughs> on a Saturday. And let's see some comparison of before and after we integrated geometry, uh, geometry nodes in the pipeline. So these stats speak for themselves. However, I would like to point out the last item on both lists, like this used to, this task used to take like 10 to 15 minutes of an AI engineer. You know like salary ranges, right? You're quite familiar. Like think of it, five or six AI engineers spending 10 to 15 minutes on each shoe versus no human resource is used, no humans are harmed. And it takes three seconds with the import and export included. So if you're from a startup, you own the company or, or you work in a company, I think just stop whatever you're doing and ask, can this be automated with Blender or can the pipeline be like improved using Blender or other software? I don't think so, like you, Blender should be enough, but just stop what you're doing and ask yourself, like if you're getting bored while, while working, it's, there is probably a more fun way to do it, yeah? And this is my info if you're interested in any of the things, not only the occluder project, juggling, climbing, music, I don't know, anything. Just reach me up, reach me out or up? Reach out to me. Yes, thank you. <laughs> yeah, and this was it, but I want to thank my uh, loyal companion, Mr. Tangerine, because he helps me with every talk I do. And thanks for the conference, for all the healthy fruits and the teas, because I was kind of like getting the flu, but now I'm, I'm like strong as a metal. Thanks, everyone, for joining me in the talk. Bye-bye. <laughs>